And uh, okay, so Howard Mountain, a little bit about Howard Mountain. He has been a collector for all been his well life. Since I, yeah, <laughs> I started, well, years ago, uh, as many people, I see people more or less my age, it, you know, every male I know, it's probably some females uh, growing up in the 50s or early 60s, collected coins and stamps, or at least coins. And that's how I started, but I, which I do not collect anymore. You know, that, I, that ended. 40 years ago or so. <laughs> but uh, we, so we've always collect, had yeah, a collection. And this one, uh, this particular, the compacts actually started, someone just asked me, uh, we used to come out for the, we, we do have to, a toy collection. Uh, and we used to come out to Kane County, you know, the, the three times a year. And uh, one time there was a, a guy came out with toys, but his wife bought a box of compacts. And one of them was an Art Deco compact. We've always liked modern. And so she did, she didn't buy it. When we got back, we started looking at eBay. So we bought you know, one or two. And then we did, we did actually ultimately buy, you know, he had it the next time we bought it. But uh, then very early, because we like modern, we made the connection to early Elgin America, which is really Chicago. And so uh, and that's, that kind of, that's how it started the whole thing. And that was 15 years ago. And um, <coughs> last year, he published this book that we had for sale. Uh, compacts in the Art Deco area. And so that's really what we're going to be talking about today is Elgin American, well, all American compacts during the Art Deco period, including Elgin. Right. So yeah. we're also on Zoom. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think Zoom can see. Um, <laughs> can you see me? I don't know. They can see you. They can see you. Can I sit down or is it going to be able to see me? I may need to set this up. What am I going to do? Oh, I can't wait. Before you start, you can get your freshman anytime during the program or after. Just wanted you to know the freshman committee over here. Thank you for all of them. Okay. Okay. We're, we're okay in technology. Let's see. What do I use this or? No, we've got um, that okay. the down. Okay. okay. Great. Anyway, uh, it's a pleasure you know, being here. Uh, as I said, we, we started collecting, we had stumbled on the fact that Elgin America, during this very short period of what, you know, when the, the, art, the Art Deco period, or the, what we call the High Art Deco period, uh, was uh, in terms of this particular product, was pre, you know, one of the two predominant country, you know, companies in the United States. Uh, just a slight bit of history. Uh, basically, compacts uh, didn't exist until about 1920, 1921. Uh, kind of uh, what happened, three things happened after, during, and then particularly after World War I. Number one, uh, women were much more inclined in, uh, to come out of the house and socialize. Uh, secondly, to come out and actually work. And uh, the third thing was cosmetics became acceptable. You know, Ricky, remembering that back, if you go back to 1900, uh, only a certain class of women uh, were thought to be permitted uh, to wear cosmetics, primarily actresses and others. So, so anyway, uh, so it all kind of came together at the same time. Uh, we, uh, what happened, uh, Elgin American, interestingly enough, uh, didn't actually, didn't you know? Didn't you know? Didn't actually do this is an early Elgin American. Uh, Elgin American was a little bit late to the starting date. Many people had you know many of the other companies had come out with compacts in 1920, 1921. Uh, Elgin American's patent didn't occur to 1923. And uh, actually, although uh, actually, if you look in the book, we I think we have an example of uh, an advertisement. It was a wholesale advertisement that they did. Uh, in 1922. So they were actually selling them before their actual patent was issued. Uh, the, the initial compacts that Elgin American and virtually everybody else did were relatively, you know, they straightforward. They, in terms of embellishment, it was really, you know, an image pressed into the metal. Uh, they did a few things. Once, you know, once, once in a while you'd find a tiny bit of enamel 
uh, maybe just a square or something like that. But if it hit, uh, initially, this was the type, you know, this was the style. Um, this, uh, they also did, this is uh, pretty early. Uh, they did do some guillotine. They had actually done guillotine uh, all the way back to uh, in the 19, you know, in, to, in, before 1920. And uh, the reason I show this is because later, particularly by 1928, uh, this became a, a very predominant uh, type of embellishment. It's still very traditional, if, if you look. Um, but nevertheless, but certainly uh, it was uh, it was something that, something they did have the skill to do. I don't think they did it widely, I think, but uh, they certainly did have some skills. Um, this is another one. They, they they basically one of the things Elgin American particularly did uh, was use gold wash to create images. Uh, this one is probably about 1925 or so. So uh, they did several of these. Uh, they're actually extremely scarce, particularly in terms of you know, something that's really you know, in good, you know, good condition, uh, but a very interesting approach. I would say this is really more, you know, still more traditional, but it's certainly something totally aside from what you would you know, normally see during this period, which was a lot, you know, usually uh, florals and you know, thing, very traditional images. Uh, in 1928, and remembering that what happened was uh, back then, uh, most, your, your, most of the compacts were sold in jewelry stores, at least of this caliber. There were also uh, brands that were sold like in drug stores and places like that. But these were actually really, this was considered jewelry. Uh, sold in jewelry stores, you know, better department stores. Uh, and they, uh, when, they did, when they did this, they had to really plan way ahead. So if you, you know, this one was probably issued, uh, actually you know, sold probably in the, it was probably in the, uh, uh, in, 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 probably in December, uh, maybe December 1927, as early as that, but probably more 19, it was a little later perhaps. Uh, that, but they really had to actually start designing these things a year in advance. The catalogs came out, their national, their new catalogs came out in the fall. So the buyers could buy them and put, and, and, uh, and uh, so the buyers could buy them for Christmas. So anything, if you, know, if, if you look at a 1928 catalog, which I think this one is in, it was probably designed actually in 1927. So it's about a, about a year before. And it took also, uh, if you ever look at the catalogs, and I know, uh, well, there, there's some pictures in my, in my book of or reproductions. And also I know, that, you know, Liz has some catalogs here. If you look at the catalogs though, the catalogs were all hand drawn. They weren't photographs, which people you sort of assume, but it wasn't at all. It was all hand drawn, which was another step that they had to go through. Uh, this is just another example. They got they, they sort of getting more elaborate. This is actually a sterling piece. Uh, you know, again, I, you know, sort of like a traditional scheme, a scene, but mar marginally different from what you would have seen in 1922, 1923. Another example. This is you know. Okay, what happened then in 19 in 1925? Uh, the the precursors to modern, you know, what we call Art Deco, which by the way is a term that only arose in 1968. Uh, but these, you know, in this, in this period, they were called modern or modern, which is the French version of modern. And the, there was a huge exhibition. The, the, there, you can find examples, which you definitely consider modern of various, you know, whether it's buildings or uh, products prior to 1925, but there was a massive Exhibition in France. It was kind of a, a something they were coming out of the you know the war years. Uh, they wanted to show French culture, French design, and it was a huge exhibit in 1925 in Paris. And that's really kind of off of them. You can know, you know it's, uh, said to be the hallmark or the start of the whole Art Deco design movement. Uh, it, it, as I said, it happened, but you know it was extensive. Uh, American, by the way, we were at that time, we were, uh, uh, we, we wanted to go it alone. Uh, we didn't want to have anything to do with Europe and their wars and so forth. And so we didn't have an exhibit there, although quite a few Americans actually did attend. Uh, the result of that 
was uh, this, well, this, the, the way the, the illustration here, uh, this is a very early uh, kind of an example of the type of thing you might have seen. They, they did have compacts, they had jewelry, uh, had furniture, all kinds of things. Uh, and this is actually from, this is actually French, uh, from probably from night, you know, night, it, was, it was in 1925 or shortly thereafter. Uh, this is another example. Uh, this is actually probably Austrian, but you can see you know, a massive difference you know, in terms of the, from a design standpoint, uh, the artistic standpoint, a lot of color, a lot of you know, all kinds of uh, geometrics uh, and nothing like anything that it had, had occurred before. Uh, when this happened, the, the, the translation uh, happened, you know, the exhibit was 1925. Uh, one of the things we know, by the way, is that at least one of the, uh, the sons of the, Ep of the Epsteins at that point, who, who are met, you know, had owned the company, uh, who later worked, it was working there, working at the factory, and then later worked, you know, act, you know, then worked uh, later as well. Uh, but he actually traveled in Europe, 27, 28. Uh, we think of Art Deco as having primarily uh, architecture, where it's very prominent. And of course, also, if you build a, build a building, perhaps it still exists. But actually, it, it translated in all kinds of ways. It was illustrations, it was fashion, uh, it was consumer products. The interesting thing about Elgin American, uh, as we'll see in a moment, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to this in a minute. Uh, Elgin American, uh, they made a almost total change in terms of they went, you know, they went from the Gillishays, 1928, 1929 catalogs to suddenly they're doing all kinds of uh, these very modern, very contemporary designs. Uh, at the time they were probably, at this time they were probably uh, the one, number one or two in terms of this particular type of product in terms of the United States, sales in the United States. They also, interestingly, have had, had uh, they had actually uh, uh, office, uh, sales offices in London, uh, you know, London, Toronto, and a couple of other places. So it wasn't, they, it, it was actually, uh, there was an international element to it as well. This particular one is, uh, uh, is Foster and Bailey, uh, Sterling. Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't consider it necessarily Art Deco per se. However, it's a great image and certainly a massive departure from anything. This one's actually probably a little earlier, probably 1927 or so. The next one, uh, this, this is one of the early enamel uh, El Elgin American ones. Uh, this, we don't know for sure. The interesting thing, if you look at their cases, uh, from, uh, from the prior cases, they use they continued using the same case. Uh, they kept and they kept using it actually, you know, for a few years after this. This we look at this as consider it probably a transitional transition from the uh, the Gillishays. You remember we saw actually one Gillishay that had essentially the same case, um, but the you know the, the transition to what we normally think about as the Elgin American Art Deco compacts, which were primarily 1930, 1931, a little bit 1932. Uh, this is just a difference. One of the things I'm doing in this lecture, we're not, I'm showing you other things what other people were doing. Uh, so it's not just exclusively, uh, and, and it, I would say, by the way, the book has actually about 90 pages, it was not about, there's 90 pages concerning Elgin American. Uh, this particular one is Evans, which was in Attleboro, Massachusetts. Probably the other, the other company that was, the, the, the Elgin American claimed to be number one, Evans claimed to be number one. There's one and two in all likelihood. It's one of many that they did. Uh, again, certainly this is probably, this is fairly early, probably 1929. Uh, nothing like, you know, what was happening just a few years before that. Uh, this is, I think this is through these end, just to show you, uh, this is Life Magazine. This is not the life we all grew up with, you know, the, the, the photojournalistic magazine. This was the prior life, as far as 18, 1883, uh, was bought out by Hertz in 1936. Uh, it was a humor magazine, but there was politics, 
movie reviews, when, when movies evolved, uh, plays, all kinds of things in it. Uh, and one of the things, you know, the, one of the things is notable is there's any number of uh, covers that involved people, you know, women, you know, applying makeup and so forth. Uh, this is one, this is another early one, probably 1929, uh, really before Elgin American got really, you know, you know, really going in terms of what they were doing. Uh, th this is, uh, I would look, look at this as somewhat stylistic. It's RNG, uh, which is uh, Ripley and Gowan, another, uh, another Attleboro company. Uh, Attleboro, by the way, by the way, was the, they claimed to be the world's, uh, the world's leading you know, jewelry manufacturer town or area in the country, I mean, in the world. This, uh, this particular piece, Elgin American, uh, one of the things they did, and this, this particular example is one where they, they actually had to fill in, this is actually, there's very slight, it's a, the metal is pressed to create cells. And so they had to actually, you know, do this you know, actually paint these cells. I don't know how they did it uh, because it is extremely precise. Uh, if you if you look at uh, if you look at I had J M Fisher, which was another leading company, uh, they did, which did almost exclusively the cells. Uh, their their work was sloppy. You know, under it looks great if you just look at it, but if you look at it in magnifying glass, you can tell it was hand done. They probably had a row of tables with young women. You know, painting these things, but this is this is Elgin American, probably 1930. By the way, this that particular one is done in all kinds of different colorways. Uh, another thing is uh, a lot of the compacts did have uh, women's figures on them. Uh, this was again somewhat stylistic. Uh, this is uh, another uh, rippling gallon one, uh, probably again from probably 1930. Another one, this is ge geometric replay gallon. Uh, again, nothing, nothing like what it was 10 years before. Again, from 1930. This is Elgin America. Now this one, in contrast to the one we saw before, this one they had, to, we believe, we don't know for sure, uh, there's no cells. Uh, actually, if you look at these under a magnifying glass, you will see that there's layers of paint. So in this particular case, they, 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 there was a layer of paint, you know, total, and then they applied at least two screens to of some sort. We don't know exactly how they did it. Again, these were very small. You can look look over at the ones I brought, uh, but it, I mean, we clearly it was some sort of silk silk ring uh, technique. Uh, one thing about Elgin American we've learned is that uh, virtually all of their equipment. All of the all of the the way they did things, it was all they had developed it themselves. It wasn't like they called up ABC's company and said, "Well, send me a you know send me a machine that will uh, paint these little two by two squares." You know, this all had to be they had to figure it out themselves. Uh, this is a this is a stair step. It's uh, Evans, uh, another Evans. Uh, again, I, I think it's you know pretty classic. You know, in terms of the modern elements, uh, uh, all kind, you know, all kinds of geometric. It's not, you know, one of the characteristics of many, many cases is uh, symmetry. This is not, it's not totally. I mean, the two sides are symmetrical. Uh, the middle part, it's kind of all over the place, but very classic. There was actually in 1930, um, Evans had a catalog page that had nine, issued nine different designs, totally different, showed them totally different totally modern, and this is one of the nine. It also comes in several colorways, by the way. Uh, okay, uh, this particular one, this is actually French, as, to, as Toka, uh, Tokaton. Uh, interesting enough, the, the name, the name was used by two different companies, one in France, one in England, I mean, excuse me, one in the United States, New York. Uh, this is the, this is the French version. Uh, you know, very simple design, you know, uh, uh, probably again, they had the silk screen in some some way. There's no, you know, there's no, there's no ridges or anything, no cells. Uh, but uh, I think you know, very, you know, very, very interesting from an artistic standpoint. Very interesting design. Ah, Elgin America. Okay, 
These are really small, by the way. They're smaller than those, just about the size. Um, this one is kind of, again, kind of a classic type of the imagery in terms of classic arc deco. Uh, you see the uh, lightning bolt, which is you know, one of the real, real classic elements. Uh, they have the moon, the stars, uh, and the sun, and uh, all put together. Uh, I think it's very good. Another thing, another thing characteristic of Art Deco is color, a lot of color, a lot of primary color for the most part. Okay, this one, I, I don't know how to describe the imagery. This is Evans, probably 19, again, probably 1930. Uh, it is not in the catalog. Many of these are not in catalogs, by the way. Uh, but you see, it has a little bit, I guess, of Art Nouveau imagery. You know, in other words, if you look at Art Nouveau, you go back and it's all kind of leaves and foliage and things like this. But then uh, that's probably a bird of paradise. Uh, Birds of paradise must have been very popular back then because they appear on a whole, whole, you know, a whole series of different, you know, different compacts. Uh, this is just another example. Again, Life Magazine. The first one was 1927, this is 1928. And uh, again, it just uh, shows uh, the interaction between the consumer products and the media. Uh, one thing I was gonna say that, I, th I didn't say this while ago, it's very, uh, Elgin America was pretty distinctive in Chicago. Chicago had did, was a tremendous, and it was back in then, was number one in terms of manufacturing in the United States. But I think it's still number two, even though we don't think about it that way, but it's still massive. Uh, but they, uh, the, for the most part, it was industrial products. And there actually were industrial products that were, that used some of the art, you know, the modern design concepts. Uh, Elgin America was one of the few, there's a couple of jewelry companies, a couple of others that actually incorporated, you know, really dug into the, in, you know, jumped into uh, the, the modern designs. And again, when we talk about modern designs, these are there's none of the comp the complex I'm showing I'm showing you today are you know 90 uh, to uh, almost up to 100 years old. So most most of them are, are right are 90, 91, 92. Uh, this this particular one is uh, uh, FHS FHS. Uh, we don't know much about the company. Many of these companies have gone out of business. Uh, this one, particular one, is also uh, very, very rare. Uh, this the, actually the image of the female is actually there's several different colorways. There's an orange colorway and or you know, yellow colorway. Uh, so which is another thing they did, remembering that if you had two jewelry stores in a town, they didn't want to carry the same thing. Typical retailer. I mean, it's a retail mentality to today too as well, and so. They would make, you know, they give one, the yellow one to one, the orange with another, and if there was another, they give the blue or whatever, you know, so. But again, I, I like it. I, mean, I just think the imagery is fantastic. Uh, Elgin America, okay. Uh, very classic. Uh, interesting enough, you know, they, they still, if you look at the, if you look at the class, it's still one of their traditional class. Later, by 1932, they pretty well, cleaned up the, uh, the clasp. And so the, the ones from a little later, uh, toward the end of this era, uh, the Elgin American produced, you could look at them, you could put them on the shelf at a, you know, at Henry Bendel or, or you know, Horton Taylor or wherever, you know, wherever you want today, uh, Don Nima Marcus, and you would think, you know, they could be just as well made yesterday. This one, the, the tip off is a, a little older, is the, is the clasp. Uh, we call this the Rolls Royce one. Uh, there's actually several colorways, uh, only because this is one of the first of the really you know, classic Elgin Americans we, that we acquired, and we actually bought it from someone in uh, Beverly Hills. So, Rolls Royce. You can't find. It. There's no place that it has more. Another Elgin American, uh, again, you know, just classic, uh, you know, architectural imagery. No symmetry but uh, all kinds of geometrics. You know, well, very well done, I think. Uh, this one I kind of had to put in. Uh, this is the, you know, the classic one you've probably seen. It's, it shows the, it shows the, uh, uh, the lightning bolt. Uh, you can see on this one, by the way, you know, if you look down, down toward the bottom, to the black, uh, they actually missed 
the, the red a little bit. It wasn't quite, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, I mean, the, the, this piece is totally pristine. It's like brand new. Uh, so it wasn't, I mean, it's not a matter of being chipped or anything like that. It is messed up. Uh, this is French, uh, Montreal, the name of the company. I borrowed another Montreal over there. Uh, call, yeah, it, it's called Nightclub. Uh, you can see why. Uh, these were, again, 1930. Uh, you'd think that Fran in France, you'd have had all kinds of big companies. They kind of so started this whole thing. You'd think you, you know, that they'd have these, all these great compacts. Actually, they don't. As a matter of fact, Montreal is, has some fantastic things, but it's one of the one of the few French companies that actually jumped on this. Actually, the company that, where they did more, much more in, in Europe, much more was actually Austria and to a certain extent, uh, the United Kingdom. This is another, I just put them together. This is another Montreal, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, this was a time when there's certain things, you know, the themes keep popping up. Uh, 1920s, you remember King Tut was discovered uh, people got interested in Egypt, Egyptian, uh, Africa, you know, the, the European countries had basically taken over at, uh, Africa, the point of a gun. Uh, so anything African, even, you know, even Chinese, Japanese, I mean, all those, so you see these, these sort of like these elements in various, you know, various compacts. Another Montreal, this is, you know, this I would call stylized it if you would, I don't know. You have to look. I, I remember when I first saw it, I had to look at it carefully. It's actually the bird is actually, it, this is the way it, this is the proper way to look at it. Uh, the bird is actually uh, almost you know, like, I guess, picking up something off the ground. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, but very, you know, again, very, very interesting. Uh, Elgin America, do you recognize the case? Uh, this is one of the broader, there's a whole series of carways. Uh, this is the only time I've ever seen this one is, is red. Uh, it was obviously a red background. Uh, they had to they screen in one way or another, both the black and also the gold, which you see. This was probably toward the end, probably, probably 1931. Uh, this, is one, uh, this is one you have to look at. This is uh, Marathon, which was another Edelborough company. You have to look at it carefully. Uh, because you can actually see, when you look at it, you can actually see the woman's head. Uh, it's easy to miss, by the way. Again, several colorways. Uh, one thing I'd point out about this is not so much Elgin American. Elgin American had a rather, you know, like a set of different cases and pretty well stuck with them all the way, all, all the way to, you know, 1932 when they pretty dropped everything. Uh, some of the other companies actually got very creative just in the case, in the way they did the cases. So this one, and this one actually comes in multiple carways as well. This is one of the rare ones. Uh, I like this one. This is, this is another Evans. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you can find anything more classic Art Deco, you know, in terms of imagery. You know, it's, uh, I, I think it's a gorgeous piece. And I think, I actually, I brought that one. It doesn't have the white dots on the other one. Um, this this is uh, this is actually Elgin American. You know, I talked about stylized. Uh, this is a bird of paradise. They say I don't know why, but the, the birds of paradise seem to be quite popular back then. And uh, this one actually comes in more than one colorway, uh, but it, it, again very distinct. And again, this one had to be they had to be multiple you know, silk screens. In this particular case, well, you actually you have. You know, four different colors, so there had to be at least three cell screens. Another Elgin American, this is one of the classic ones. This is the one you probably have seen. It comes in two colorways. This, this is the dark, the darker colorway. There's also a lighter color, colorway. Uh, again, no, not, no symmetry, but uh, absolutely uh, uh, char uh, characteristic of the Art Deco you know, era. Another Elgin American. Uh, this one, this one actually, to me, I, I grew up in the Southwest, uh, Oklahoma, and then really grew up in New Mexico. Uh, to me, it's American Indian, but I don't, you know, I don't know what the inspiration. Uh, you know, we don't know. There's, we only tell, we tell one story in the book, uh, something that Rich Reiner found 
of, you know, of one woman that was a designer. We don't know who designed these for the most part. The Montreal we do, a few of the heavens, but uh, we don't know who to design these. And we probably, it was a combination of, remember they had 1,500, sometimes up to 2,000 people. So it was either some internal talent or they, you know, this one particular woman was our student in, you know, at the, what is now the Art, at Art Institute School or School of Art Institute. And she, you know, she was, she was just working, she was a part-timer. To me, this, it, it's, uh, you know, it would be typical, you know, Southwestern American Indian. Um, this is, this is, this is another, uh, you know, we talked about the, the question on this one, is it African or Indian? I mean, not American Indian, but Indian, <laughs> Asian Indian. Uh, and we don't know. Uh, my, because of the, the, you know, the, the top of it, you know, what looks like more of a tree or something like that. I'm kind of guessing maybe it's more of a uh, uh, Asian Indian, you know, uh, influence. Uh, again, they use this imagery more than once. This is Evans again. Uh, this one a little earlier, 19, probably 1928, 19, probably 1929. So this is one of my favorites. Uh, the other company, and I, we go into great detail in the book, uh, that was that, you know, in terms of someone who really jumped in to the, you know, using modern, you know, the modern design elements, uh, was J.M. Fisher, another Attleboro company. Uh, fantastic designs, totally different than, you know, there, there's a couple of companies like Bolupi, uh, you could argue, actually copied Belgian America in some of their designs. These are totally, totally different. Uh, this particular one is the one is the woman carrying the world, and you, know, you think about that. If you think about you know women's suffrage and all these things, uh, you know this, this was this is ninety years ago. You know, so uh, obviously the that, that those ideas are not new. Yeah, you know. but again, this now this was also one. That each one of these cells had to be filled by hand. Uh, I didn't count the colors, but I think there's seven or eight colors, eight, nine colors. So, but again, you'd have to paint them. Uh, orangey, you know, classic, uh, again, uh, you, know, you know, classic uh, art deco elements, all kinds of geometrics. That's not, no symmetry, but really, a, you know, great designs. I like this particular one. This is Elgin America. Uh, you're not, it's not quite sure, you know, what, it's obviously a woman, appears to be nude, uh, walking in the moonlight. Uh, we don't know exactly what, you know, whether those are scarves or paths or what, but again, very, it's a very, you know, I, I just think it's a very neat design. But again, when you think of, this one is actually probably 1931. Uh, one of the things, if you notice the, you know, where the chain is, uh, this was, this was actually, of where they, after they cleaned up, and then they were no longer using those kind of classic clasp. And so they, they, this is the type of thing that, he, again, you could put in a store today and think, you know, they just made it. Not that people use these convex anymore, but. Uh, another, this is just to show you a little bit of difference. Uh, this is a, another J.M. Fisher. Uh, this one is a combination. They're actually, they, they're all, there's all these, wells or cells that were painted. And then they actually came back and actually did some additional, uh, you know, additional work by hand. Uh, if you notice, I assume it's a sunburn or whatever, but if you, if you actually lined up, you know, two or three of these together, they would be somewhat different. I mean, this, this was actually, part of it was hand done. Uh, Totokan, again, this is classic French. Uh, they, they uh, it was again 19, again 19, you know, 30, uh, totally different than anything else. Uh, you know, I think, you know, very, you know, kind of very classic you know, image uh, and interesting. Actually, comes in, uh, they the actually, the inside is the same. However, that where the red is, actually, there's several different colorways. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons I, I like this one, it's a shield. It's a, the you know, Elgin American did a ton of these. Uh, the interesting thing about this, the reason I put it where I did, is it has the French image. Mm -hmm. It's actually Elgin American. 
So obviously no one was doing, you know, they, they were glad to steal from each other, okay? Uh, this one, now, this, this one, I, 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 it's hard to describe. It certainly didn't look like anything from 1920. Uh, uh, it's, uh, this, this is another J.M. Fisher, a very unique, uh, all geometric. You know, again, each of these cells had to be painted individually. <coughs> we don't know who made this, uh, but this is England. They did some interesting things in England uh, wasn't so much the manufacturers of novelties, which like Elgin mm -hmm. American, it was more individual, uh, uh, individual, so they had a whole group of different drugs, what we would call drug stores. And they did, a, they did, the, they did a whole, they did a whole series on their own. Uh, we don't know who did this one. Uh, I, I think it's just interesting again, it's in, you know, 1930, 30, 31, uh, just from the codes, the color and the imagery itself. Okay, this is one, I don't know where you've seen this. Uh, I've only seen it a couple of times. I don't think, Liz, you don't have this one, do you? No. I don't think so, yeah. Uh, this is one we assume, it's also American, it's their style, you know, that this particular case was, they used it many, in many different ways. Uh, but we assume that it had to be Chicago, uh, remembering that, you know, buildings, skyscrapers, there was only at this time, there were only two cities in the United States that had, you know, multiple skyscrapers. It was uh, Chicago, New York, period. You know, other places might have a shorter building, maybe a couple, you know, a couple, maybe once in a while a taller building. But, you know, you know, we assume, we have to assume that this is Chicago. A very, you know, very, you know, very, very neat design. Uh, just as, you know, just, just another image of the, this is another uh, Elgin American, uh, again, classic, you know, modern design elements or, or technical design elements, a lot of color. Uh, I threw this one in, uh, this one is not, she's actually not, I, I assume she has, gonna put on cosmetics, but actually you can see she has uh, lipstick. Uh, she's actually, uh, you know, giving herself a tan, uh, but the interesting thing about this, if you look at it throughout the, from top to bottom, it's all all triangles, which they call it, they're, they're, they're like <laughs> lingo, they call these chevrons. And even the way she's, the way her, her leg and is bent, uh, the way her arms are bent, everything is, everything is triangle. Uh, this is uh, actually a cover from 1929. Interesting enough, uh, this is another life, but just before, the crash. Uh, this was in August, 1929. So things were still going good. <laughs> yeah, it didn't last long. Uh, this is another English, just to give you some feel for this. This was, uh, this is Atkinson, which is another drug company uh, in England. Again, you know, the same, same era. Uh, this is another one, uh, J.M. Fisher, uh, you see the J.M. Fisher designs, very modern, very different, totally different than Elgin America, you know, and vice versa. Uh, this present is interesting. Uh, we don't know what the, you know, the, the interesting thing about it is the figure is actually black. Uh, we assume that's the African income, you know, influence, no one knows. Yeah, but again, you, you see all the classic, you know, the, the triangles, other, you know, the other design elements. This is one, this is a interesting, one of the things that happened, Elgin American and J.M. Fisher basically just adopted the modern designs, you know, uh, concepts for everything that they were doing during these years, 1930, 1931. Uh, this is, uh, is actually uh, a company uh, called Woodworth, W-O-O-D, Worth. Uh, they, this is probably more typical. They only did two, <laughs> That we know of two designs that you would classify as Art Deco or modern. Uh, this is one of them. It's kind of classic. Uh, you know, it's very collectible. Uh, you, it must have sold very well because you see quite a few of these. Size and style. Huh? Size and style. So, oh, size. Um, I like that. Uh, probably inch and three quarters. Yeah. Most of these 
were more or less two by two. Now, some of them, like the marathon one, you remember, it's longer, but it's also thinner. So most of the, you know, the problem is, so you guys grew up with these big clunky things, you know, in, you know, 40s and 50s. Uh, that was all, but this was all predated that. And actually, these are very small, very, very easy to carry. Also, I should mention, and I think probably most of you know this, uh, the, the, the chains, by the way, were totally American. Uh, the, the foreign compacts didn't have those. Uh, the American compacts added chains. And the excellent idea was it was a danced compact. So you could push, you know, put the chain around, you know, around your middle your finger and actually carry it to the dance. That was, I don't know where people really did it, but that's, that was the idea. Uh, this is Vache. Uh, this was actually less expensive. Uh, very, uh, you know, very straightforward, but on the other hand, a uh, very, you know, very classic type of design. And they, uh, uh, they had uh, quite a number of these. These were probably not sold. These were probably sold at stores other than the jewelry stores. Uh, this one is wool bar, uh, which is actually, uh, actually French, uh, very interesting. You know, design, I think, kind of wild. You know, okay, you know, that's about all you can say. So, but I think, you know, it just shows you what, you know, what was going on. Uh, this is another example. This is, this, this one, this is interesting. It, it, the picture really doesn't do it justice because it was actually, uh, it's, it's actually uh, has a fired enamel on all, on all sides, the edges, the back and the front. And this is again, this is probably, we don't know. The, the, the Europeans were not very good about identifying their country of origin. Uh, this was probably most likely Austrian, could be German. But uh, again, to the, from that same period, you know, the early 1930s. This is one, okay, this is the one that the Art Deco people love because it is so classic Art Deco. You know, uh, symmetries there, chevrons are there, uh, all the imagery, it's all, you know, it's, it's all classic, uh, you know, shapes. And so uh, anyway, this, this was actually featured, if you've ever seen the book, uh, uh, Art Deco Chicago, it's featured in, it's one of the ones featured there. Uh, this particular one, uh, Work is Hinge Coal, which was another less expensive company. Uh, but the, the less expensive, many of the, many of the less many companies that did produce less expensive products also went in this direction for a short time, wasn't very long. But again, because you remember what happened in 19, you know, the crash happened in 29, 1930, uh, everything well, was looking pretty good. The back then, if you read economics, the bankers and the business types were deathly, deathly, deathly afraid of inflation. And they were afraid the economy was getting too good. Uh, the Federal Reserve, you know, cut the money supply. And then the crash went right down to 1933 to the bottom. Yeah, but this is a hinge count. Sure. Let me look. Down the bottom, Wait, this one. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the hinge. Yeah, if, if you look at the if you look at you know at the Elgin American, Elgin American. One thing they did, they were extremely sophisticated in their hinges, and you don't see them. But the, you know, again, this is a lesser expensive product. So. I have a question. Yeah. Price. Sure. Uh, well, not so much these, but the, the ones, the Evans Fisher, uh, the you know, Evans Fisher, Elgin American, the higher, you know, high, uh, high, the, so what was considered the jewelry. Uh, these probably sold for anywhere from uh, you know, seven, eight, nine dollars, ten dollars. And what would that be? Well, well, let me see. Even more so, we don't, we didn't. I mean, I didn't go into the Gilliche, Gil but you know, it's in the book, twenty eight, twenty nine. There were a lot of sterling. You know, Elgin American produced a lot of sterling, 
And the Sterling Jello Shays back in 1927, 28, 29, some of them were selling, uh, or they were selling retail for as much as uh, $24, $25. Uh, 1927, 1928, uh, average incomes, 1928, I think, I think it's in the book, but 1928, the average incomes in the United States was less, was less than a dollar an hour. Actually, quite a bit less because uh, we didn't have 40 hour days back then. And so like it was 18, 1800, 18, 18 and 1900. So you figure that you know, if something costs 20, $24, uh, you know, for an average, it was really out, totally out of reach for, any, you know, for an average consumer. There was no way, because that would be actually, you know. But so these were rich people. Well, they weren't rich, middle class. Middle class. Yeah, the really rich, there, there actually were gold. I mean, if you, you know, if you, but once in a while, if you want to look on eBay, they all people are offer Cartier and you know, different, you know, different tours. So, but these were probably the the enamels were probably initially you know, again six, eight, seven, eight dollars, nine dollars. But again, that could be a day's day's work. And you also remember between 1928 and 1933, uh, average incomes dropped by 40 percent. So even if something was still eight dollars. It was even more, it was even more expensive. Yeah. So uh, this is another RNG. Uh, you know, one of the things that happened, you know, there's just some incredible imagery in some of these that you wouldn't expect to see. I mean, you might expect it today, you might have seen expect 1950, maybe 1960. Uh, I don't think anyone would say, yeah, this has to be from 1930, but it was. Elgin American. Elgin American did a number of things, number of, had a number of pieces that were totally incredible, you know, in terms of you know, design from a design standpoint. And uh, this, this particular one, uh, I can't describe it. It's definitely modern. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, this is almost like modern plus because it, you know, it goes beyond you know, what you would think was going on. Yeah, uh, yes. I noticed two things with the Elgin Americans. Elgin Americans don't seem to do any um, engraving on the edges, so there's not much. Uh, some of the early ones did. But I mean, the more when they became yeah. with, I mean, they seem to be the only ones who were doing the crackle board on the. Paint. Uh, no, actually, Evans did some of that. Well. Yeah, it's yeah, but the uh, the, uh, the crackle actually, Elgin American did. They were probably did more than anybody yeah. else. Again, you know, see, we don't know how they really developed these techniques because, you know, you look back 1928, 29, it was all Gelgia and traditional. And then suddenly they started doing all this and it, it probably got more innovative as they, you know, as, as you got in 1931, you know, 1932. Uh, another, this is just a, yeah, you, know, you can't, it's hard to describe. This is another uh, J.M. Fisher. <laughs> Uh, as I say, J.M. Fisher was the other company that really jumped in wholeheartedly to the, in terms of modern design. Uh, I like this one because of the color, and but also the design itself. And of course, of course there's a lot of Art Deco imagery. Uh, another RNG, uh, hard to describe, but again, this is this, like I put, we'll put some samples in here just to show you what different companies were doing. And this is all toward probably 1931. You know, just toward the end of what we call the higher Deco period. Uh, another, you know, very classic, you know, design. I mean, classic, classic. It's really, you know, totally Art Deco, all geometric. Uh, this is another Fisher. Okay. So what happened? Nineteen, you know, nineteen thirty-one. Those of you, many of you, are familiar with this. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 essentially. The uh, watch case factory was, you know, was about you know, was going broke. They laid off most of their staff. Uh, they tried to sell off as much of the inventory as they could, uh, but they also remember there's a management change. The, the, the existing managers were forced out. Another other another out part of the family took over, and uh, one of the things they did they redesigned everything. So what happened? All kinds of things. Uh, uh, enamels. For the most part, totally gone. 
Uh, they had a little bit 1933, but not very much, in very simple designs. Uh, chains disappear. Rouge, actually, Rouge disappeared first. Enamel was about the same time. And just a little later, the chains disappeared. And so everything became simpler. But the other thing they did was, you know, they, they got away from the, you know, the, the, these, these small compacts had these intricate uh, uh, elements in them to contain and dispense uh, uh, a powder. Uh, at this time was when they started doing press powder. And so they, what they did, they created these larger compacts uh, sometimes, actually, uh, some of them even got up to four inches in diameter, uh, particularly in 19, the 1940s. Uh, that were they were larger. The tolerances were, you know, were not nearly as extreme. Uh, the sterling was gone for the most part. Actually, the Elgin American did do some sterling all the way to the end, uh, and then, and then, uh, and all the nickel. Most of these, by the way, are nickel alloy, which is an excellent metal. Uh, that went away. They started made using a bronze and whatever cheap metal they could possibly find. You know? And so everything was dumbed down in a sense. And uh, where these, these compacts, 1920, they say some of them were selling up to $20 or more. Uh, by 1947, you can find Elgin American compacts. They're sold for two, two $3. Yeah. So anyway, this uh, I'm going to show you a little bit just to a handful of what happened afterwards with these very, various, various companies. Uh, this particular design is actually 1939, probably Zell, we're not quite sure. Uh, but they, uh, this particular, this was actually a, uh, an image uh, that was on one of the buildings in the 1939 World's Fair in New York. But again, one of the, one of the relatively few that you say really is you know, you know, really interesting from a design standpoint. Uh, 1940, uh, this is a new company uh, called Wadsworth, not Woodworth, Wadsworth. Uh, this is out of many. Uh, actually, it's impossible to, to photograph. Uh, the, the difference in color doesn't exist, you know, like around the edges doesn't exist. But uh, look again, but also much larger. You know, it's pressed powder. 1947, well, I don't know. <laughs> She just, she just frowned at this one. Uh, this is, you see, you see, if you're people, see, none of you were teenagers in 1947. And so, anyway, this is Hilda Terry. She was a famous, she was actually the first uh, female cartoonist uh, that was part of the, the union. And she did a series of six of these designs uh, in 1947, totally aimed at the teenage part. Yeah. Well, it could be, yeah. This is this. I don't know. It's hard to say. There, there, there's several. There, there's several. There's several designs. I'd say this is the prom one. There's several designs. I mean, there's one. You know, they're talking on the telephone. There's another one. Uh, they're in a in a uh, in a uh, ice cream shop. You know, sharing a, you know, a shake or something. Another one. There's a. Yeah, there was other. Uh, they were doing. You know, they were dancing. So there's, as I say, there's six all. Okay, this one, now this is Elgin America. Now, again, they didn't totally forget, but they just 99% forgot. Uh, this was actually probably not the early 1950s. Uh, you know, it could, it could it fit in beautifully with uh, what they did, had done, you know, 30, you know, 20 years before. But uh, again, one of the very rare examples. This is one, this is actually about the early 50s also. This is Hudnut, uh, totally impractical by the way. Uh, this is called Thunderbird and you can see it. Uh, I think it's a gorgeous design. So there were, that my, my point is here and there, there were some interesting designs post you know, 1932 to 33. Uh, many fewer, you know, not, not, anything, not anything like that short period, the high art technical period, but there were some. Uh, this one is totally impractical. The reason it's impractical, as soon as you get it, the first the first thing that happens is you scratch it, and all it takes is one you know really one scratch, and you know you you really messed it up. So, 
This is Watson. This is a, called a figural. This became very popular back then. This is actually a, a short. Uh, this one actually is very rare, uh, but because they had other short ones, but this is the cowboy shirt. So figurals were basically for compacts that were made in some, you know, created you know, an image of something, you know, and there's all, all kinds, you know, all kinds, but, you know, this was just an example. Okay, 19, 19 you, you can guess, this, <laughs> this should have been some of your era. Uh, this, this was 19, 1969, 1970. Uh, by this time, virtually all of the American companies had gone away, had closed. This is Stratton, which actually still exists. You know, they, you know, it's an English, an English company. Uh, I can't, it's psychedelic, what can you say? I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty. This was actually a compact actually I bought Joanne you know, many years ago. Okay, this, these two, uh, for the last, we're gonna go back to 1951. This is the Elgin, Ver whoops, I'm sorry. What happened here? I did something, I don't know. Can you just click too many times? Okay, yeah. You can go back up, because this is the last slide, right? Yeah, yeah. okay. This, this is the Dolly, this is Elgin American. Uh, I don't know, I think they were trying to establish an element of prestige. Uh, this is the Dolly bird, bird in hand. Uh, one of the questions that had been, has been around is whether Dolly was really involved. We explained that's something that recently we've confirmed, yes, he really was. Uh, the, the patents are all Elgin employees, but that's not totally, you know, surprising. You know, he did, he did a drawing or several drawings and then they actually turned it into a compact. Uh, the, there's a, con this, this however, the neat, the, the distinguishing thing about this is this is the Sterling version. Uh, for many years, most people that I know never thought that those were never produced. Uh, it came in three versions. The two versions you see are a bronze version, I, uh, a silver plated version, which is always terrible because they, what happened, they either used, they use, either used uh, inferior metal or not, you know, heavy enough plating because there's little black spots always appear and some are terrible, most of them are terrible. And so, and then the Sterling version, uh, this particular one, uh, there's a tail, I can get back, whoops. I'm sorry. Okay, don't worry. No worry. You want to go back uh, to that uh, previous uh, one? Uh, yeah. Okay. There's a pre. Yeah. If you look at it, when you open up the wings, there's an there's a place for your for powder. Uh, no rouge. Uh, the head actually comes out for lipstick, and in the tail, we really don't know why. They have a there's a little a little box. I guess kept to your time for your pills or whatever. And uh, uh, this particular one, the reason you get the way you can tell, uh, if, you one, if one of you happen to have it at home, you might want to look at it. Uh, it shows it has sterling on the lid of the powder. It also has sterling on the tail. And also the, the, each, each piece is numbered. This is number 12. We assume that if they sold any, it was very few, very few, and these were probably given to the you know, to the management, the owners, and the board of Elgin American. You know, in all likelihood, uh, I only know of three. One of them is damaged. Uh, one of them is not as nice as this one, but nice, nice one, and that, that's actually owned by you know, one of the people whose parents were involved in the company. But uh, anyway, this. Again, it doesn't fit with anything else. Totally impractical, by the way. The thing's big, clunky. Uh, I can't imagine you using it, anyone using it. Uh, I've never seen one with power. Yeah. Were Dolly's uh, drawings wrong? No, I don't think they ever have. Evidence of the We have, we, we've talked to people that know about the, me the meetings and so forth. Uh, as far as I know, we also, uh, there's another book and I can't remember uh, the woman's name, 
uh, who actually interviewed someone at the factory. He worked there in 1951 and had and did see him at the factory. So we, uh, there was a meeting in New York uh, with a, a member of the family and management you know, members uh, with Dolly. Uh, and they, that was when they you know, made the decision. He, he had a number of different designs. And that's when they made the decision. So we, 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 know, we know he was you know, there and, and probably I'm sure he was paid well. But the, I mean, it, it, the fact that the fact that uh, uh, <clears throat> the fact that he that he that, that the patents were made by or were done by some of the employees of Elgin American to me it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I mean that's not surprising. That's all I'm trying to say. No. Uh, anyway, that's sort of the present. That's the presentation. However, I'd love to answer questions or if you if you and I'll be glad to stick around if you have questions. Yeah, but at least I'm not. Cigarette cases, uh, I didn't include those. Uh, I do have some examples in the book. Uh, most of these companies, Marathon, Evans, uh, yeah, another one, Gary, which I didn't, I don't think I, I had a compact. Uh, most of them uh, were actually produced in addition to compacts cigarette cases and lighters, you know, to different degrees. Evans was made, was, was a major, you know, a major manufacturer of cigarette lighters and cases. And Elgin American, the Elgin American did it throughout all the way to the end, uh, but the classic ones are in the 1931 catalog. I mean, gorgeous pieces. Anyone else questions? Yes. Everyone say hi to Lori. She's watching from Florida. Yeah. She asked, um, "What is inside the compact? Is it just a mirror, or the powder makeup?" No, all of these had. Uh, they had. There was a mirror and a mechanism for releasing the loose powder. And so, some, and so there's a few of them. Of 1929, there were actually a few of them that actually had the very small, like about an inch. Uh, a little dispenser uh, for lipstick. And actually, there is a handful, again, early 1929, 1928, that actually had a, a little dispenser of perf perfume. So, but that's. Another question about um, when they had a, a strap. She wanted to be wearing like a necklace on your wrist. Uh, some people did. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not intended. Uh, you, you will actually find them periodically. Uh, people have removed the chain and put a longer chain, and that was probably by a necklace. The intent was that you you carry it in your hand, but I, I don't know how many people really did that. I thought you carried it like a purse, so the chains were not very long, right? Well, no, the chains were really short, you know, but, but but the ones, I mean, I have seen them with a, a large chain that you could easily, you know, wear, you know, wear it around your neck. Yes? I have one or two of them that are the, the bigger, larger, almost like a purse that also had the carry, like sort of cardboard covered uh, well, in yeah. fabric. Um, what what time period were those more late 50s? Well, they were, no, they, the, the ones, well, but it has a fabric cover. It has a little, it has like a little fabric cardboard pouch that it like fits into. So you have the contact that's probably about this thick. And this long, and then it fits into this. Well, they, those were those were actually. Uh, Elgin American didn't do as many of those, but they were they're called vanities, and there were early vanities, you know, back even even before the compacts. And Elgin American made them. They, that was one of the things they made. They made both vanities, and they also made powder boxes. And powder boxes just a little little round, usually sterling. There's a lid, a lid. There's a barrel on the lid. And they just had loose powder. I can't imagine putting your purse. Yeah. I mean, you can end up with powder. Yes. They all have like a little purple Yeah, right. You'd have to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I had all of the compacts. There's a lot of the, the little purple pouches, you know, particularly later. Uh -huh. You know, when, of course, that was all pre those, those were mostly for press powder. You know, you know so, but yeah, they, 
Yeah. So, any other? Any, any, I'm sorry. Did the person fill it with powder themselves, or did they come back? Uh, you could order it. In other words, uh, what happened was, you know, now there were some companies like Hudnut was actually a perfumer. I mean, it made cosmetics. Uh, so they they provide they you know they you know you could buy these compacts were intended to be reused, so you could buy the you know refill. Uh, people like Elgin American didn't make the perfume or cosmetics, so they would then contract with various suppliers. When we've opened them up, they have been they will have a little slip of paper that says, you know, mail 10 cents to here and you'll be Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Or whatever that little piece is. Yeah. So we left all of those little pieces. Yeah, they, what, happened, what happened was that these, these were mainly made, it was a group of companies that, you know, made, they call them novelties, but it was like, you know, things like uh, picture frames and belts, buckles and uh, thimbles and all kinds of stuff. And so they, they had the capability of you know making you know these metal you know you know piece you know metal pieces, yeah. But so it was kind of a natural transition. The, the, there were also there were a group of companies that never made them on their own. They just made them for other companies, you know, to particularly the perfume companies. But this Elgin American just it was sort of a natural trans yeah transition yeah. There's another question about the um, the compact that had who we thought was Cinderella or the girl at the prom. What was the name of the company that made that? Wait, which one? The one that had the like the girl at the prom. The yellow. Oh, girl. that was uh, actually Rex. What is, how do you spell that? R E X. It's a New York company. It wasn't. They they it was newer. They were they were in business back in the thirties. I should probably know this, but what was the and date for Elgin American. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, what happened was uh, after you know, after World War II, uh, the cosmetic companies started making their own. And then they started making plastic throwaways, real cheap. And, and it really, they destroyed the market for this particular product. Uh, Elgin America hung on. Uh, no, someone, gentleman just mentioned, in fact, he has some pearls that and they, they got into all kinds of things toward the end, toward the, the latter half of the 50s. Uh, none of it worked. <clears throat> you remember, they, the last catalog I have that has like Elgin American products, I think is 19, about 1959, 50, maybe 57, 58. And they were trying to do all kinds of things. Uh, uh, the, um, the the owner they tried to they tried to make a deal with Japan. And you remember, you know, back then Japan was the Bangladesh of the world. Everything was cheap, cheap labor, all of that. And so at one point, he actually sent. He thought thought he had a deal. He actually sent the machinery to Japan and never saw it again. And they also never, they never got it back. We don't know exactly when everything closed up. Uh, obviously they couldn't, after they sent the machinery, there was no way they couldn't make anything. And was the Epstein thing still involved? No, Epstein, Epstein's were, uh, they, they, were, they were bought out about 1940. Yeah, so this, and so they, uh, they, they prospered Elgin American prospered in the 40s, early 50s. Uh, totally, was, I think, pretty clear in this particular product category, we're number one. You know, but uh, number one and no pro no sales. <laughs> it, didn't make any, it didn't make any difference. I mean, they, they, got, they got involved in all kinds of you know, carry-alls. They were still doing, they were still doing lighters. They were still doing uh, some you know, cigarette cases. Uh, they tried... Uh, you know, they tried a whole series of different things, but again, another it was way, way too little, too much. I mean, too, too late. So, and we think that they probably actually collapsed maybe 61, 62. Uh, I've never, I've never seen the definitive answer for that. We, we, we assume also another thing people uh, sometimes ask is, is there archives? 
as far as we know, there probably is, but it's probably somewhere buried in the Elgin dump. Yeah, because you know, no one's ever, unless someone has a garage full of it, which may, may who knows? Yeah, I mean, the p things we have from Elgin America are just pieces here and there. Yeah, anything else? Yeah, sure. Not not in Elgin America. Okay. It was some Evans that had a very some very early 1928, 29 did. So you could you buy like that tasty perfume? It's kind of like Vaseline. I know my grandpa had a couple of those. <laughs> 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 yeah. And you could buy that? Okay. Yeah. I think you could, yeah. And then refill it. Any other? You got any more? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.